trading man here and tonight we're, we're going to cover some trade setups from the nasdaq this week so two weeks now in the books for trading in 2023 the first week for me i didn't have a whole lot of trades this past week though was a pretty busy week i had trades in the s p nasdaq crude oil pretty busy week really good week as well but um what i want to cover tonight are a couple 50 percent retracement setups in the nasdaq that i took on wednesday and thursday the nice thing about them is that there's examples of losers and winners, so it covers the realistic side of trading, where you're going to have trades that go against what you thought may happen or become losers, you get stopped out. How do you deal with that? And really, the simple answer is you have an edge, so you follow your system, you follow your plan. You know, We don't get impatient, we don't have FOMO, we don't force anything. We just be patient, be disciplined, wait for those valid setups, and then whatever happens, happens, and that's the game. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, just this, you know, so we get what I was thinking about throughout the week. I want to cover some of the larger time frame. We have a very large 50% short in the NASDAQ, 13,168 half. We can see from the swing high of that setup here, 13,740. We then move lower to the swing low. That gave us a 50% short of 12,112.75. From that swing high to this swing low that we just created uh, recently, that gave us a 50% short of 11,545. So I'm gonna drop down to an hourly, that was a four hour. And what we wanna talk about here is how going into the week on Monday, we had this nice move higher Monday. And that made me think that we could head higher in the NASDAQ to this 11,545, 50% short. And knowing that, that made me wanna look for long setups. Um, we had great structure here. We broke out of some what looked like resistance. There was also a Fibonacci setup that we broke that confirmed that as well. And it seemed like we would run higher into 11,545. So Tuesday, I'm trying to find some long setups. I end up having a couple losers on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, we just follow the sequence and get some long. So I'm going to drop down to the five minute. We can go ahead and talk about some of the setups here in the NASDAQ. Now, what's important to look at for Tuesday is basically there was this 50% long sequence that traded. And what we're doing here is just taking a swing low to a swing high using the 50% retracement tool with Fibonacci. If you're not familiar with this tool, I'm sure there's plenty of videos out there on YouTube, plenty of websites that cover this. Um, also my trade room, I have over seven hours of, of content with videos covering this setup and plenty more Fibonacci setups. This is how I've earned plenty or many accounts uh, with with funded firms and things like that. But anyways, we trade this 50% long, 11,172. We then complete the target up here of 11,247. We draw our next low to high 50% long. Ends up being about 214 half. I don't have this trade. I, I wasn't around at that time. I'm just observing this going into Wednesday. Now, Wednesday comes along and we end up completing the target that traded at the end of the day on Tuesday. So now we have this 50% long, 11,259 half. And now what we get into is the intraday sequence as well as the sequence from Tuesday. That may seem confusing, but basically what I mean is from Wednesday, we have that open of 6 p.m. Tuesday evening, 6 p.m. Eastern time is the open going into Wednesday. And that becomes the intraday moving forward. So we now have this swing low from the sequence that traded the day before. So Tuesday's 50% longs have led to this swing low being a valid place to draw from. Also, it's an intraday uh, low to high that we can use. So we take our low of Wednesday, which is about 2 a.m. Eastern time, to the high that completed this target. That trades 11,282. And we then complete a target just before the bell. Now, my thought process, this is where I begin to look for my trades, right? So my thought process is simply this. We completed the target at 11,344 quarter. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to draw the next 50% long, like, I, like I've been doing this entire time. I'm going to draw from this swing low of about 7.20 a.m. to the new high, and I'm going to take that next 50% long. If that fails, I'm going to take this setup here, this full setup that we have and take that draw to the new high. And I'll take the full 50% long on the intraday, basically. If both of those setups fail, then I'm gonna sit on my hands and reassess the situation. 
There could be some shorts that I, I need to be aware of. There could be some larger longs that could come into play. Maybe a week to date, 50% long going from Sunday evening to our recent high that could come into play. There could be an hourly 50% long to pay attention to. The point is, if both of those setups fail, I'm going to sit on my hands and be patient, just look around and wait. So let me drop down to a tick chart, 512 tick chart. If you don't know what a tick chart is, basically it's going to measure transactions or trades rather than time. So all of these candles, rather than being one minute or five minute, what we're doing is we are seeing every 512 trades or transactions, a new candle is formed. This can help us on the micro time frame because we can see all the little moves within those time-based bars that you wouldn't see otherwise, especially with economic events like when we had uh, CPI on Thursday. This can be very useful to use. So moving forward, like I said, we're going to look for the next 50% long here Wednesday morning. And this ends up being a stop out. I enter 11,000, I think it was like a 313 or 314. It does give a little bit of a move here, but not enough for my targets. I end up being stopped out. See how we break beneath the 61.8. That I, I get stopped out here. I lose 15 points per contract on that trade. So I'm down 15 points per contract at this point in the NASDAQ. Like I said, though, because that setup failed, what I'm going to do is take this setup to its new high. So remember, we had this 50% long. And that next 50% long failed. So now we're going to take this setup to the new high. And we're going to put our limit longs in. I did 11,295. And I put my stop at 75. 11,275. I had a 20 point stop and a 20 point first target. My second targets, I like to go for two times risk. So I had 40 points as my second target. And the third target then was 60 points doing three times risk. So the, the overall trade, if you get all three targets, is risk one to make two. So we had that loser of 15 points of contract beforehand. Now we come into the full 50% long, risking 20 points on each of those contracts. I do my you know, sets in thirds. So I have a first target where a third of the position is coming off. So we get that 20-point move, and I end up taking my first target. I have a limit there for 20 points and then a, a, another limit for 40 and then another limit for 60, okay? But they're coming off in thirds. So a third of the trade is off at 20 points, and we end up running into this opposing 50% short. And if you know about FIBS or if you're in the trade room, then you know that we wanna see this fail. We wanna see a break above the 61.8 that will help the longs continue higher. So that's what we end up getting. We end up breaking above our 61.8 here for the short. That's gonna allow us to continue higher here in the NASDAQ. And we end up getting the second target of 40 points. Now, two thirds of the trade is taken off. And now I'm going to begin trailing my last set here as I go for 60 points. I was using the prior higher lows on the tick chart. So I had a stop at 306 at one point. Then I ended up putting my stop to 315. Once we broke above this high of um, 341.75, I then moved my stop here which was a 331. And I'm going for 60 points on this last set. So 355 is that exit, right? Once I got to 350, 353, 354, I moved my stop to 340 just because we were getting so close to that second target, sorry, that third target. And then we end up completing 355. So I got 20, 40, and 60 on that trade. And it ends up being a great run. Again, an example where we have a loser to start our morning. The next 50% long failed. We lost 15 points of contract. Then the second trade, we got 20 points, 40 points, 60 points. That overall trade was risk one to make two. Why is that important? Well, it means if we are risking one to make two, we can lose a trade, win one, and now we're profitable. We can lose two, win one, we're break even. Now, obviously, with different sizes of stops, that's going to change. So remember, the first trade was a 15-point stop. Our second trade was a 20 point stop. So already we're sizing up on the second trade. So it's great that we're risking one to make two, but regardless with these targets being hit, we're gonna cover more than just half of the initial loss and or the full loss and then another half because we're risking more points, if that makes sense. Um, that's a lot of words, but basically again, we're putting up 15 points per contract on the first trade. 20 points per contract on the second. So this in general is just a larger trade that we're taking, and that's gonna improve our risk reward compared to the first trade. All right, so then we end up having a nice green day. I ended up having one more trade this day, and that was this low 
to this high because again, we complete our target, the negative 23.6, and we go ahead and we complete, again, that target. So now I take this swing low to this high. We end up trading this 11,000, basically 340. I got a first target, but nothing more. So I end up having a break even trade here. Actually, no, I moved my stop. I ended up having a really small winner. Very, very small. It was barely anything really. So just basically a break even trade, I guess. Um, but what ended up happening was we actually traded the same setup to the new high again. So the full 50% long on the day again traded. And um, that's a 314 quarter. And that ended up running to its target as well at 424. Now backing up to the hourly again. What ended up happening going into Thursday is the NASDAQ and the S&P also became very aggressive with buying. And again, we have this idea in our head that we can run up into 545 and then sellers may come back in. So Thursday morning, I'm thinking, okay, we have CPI at 830. We're probably going to see something volatile. I'm going to be aware of this short. Maybe there's an opportunity to get short. I ended up not going short 545, but that was an opportunity. Um, I was like, I'm just going to basically watch the NASDAQ and see what comes and then go from there. So the NASDAQ had these really aggressive setups. And I didn't want to trade those because with the CPI release, we could easily fail that and head lower. So I sat on my hands and waited. And we basically pulled into a full week to date 50% long. So going from our swing low of the week to our high at that time, we ended up trading a 50% long of 11,000. 322. 11,322. What happened was we traded the resistance of 11,545, that 50% short that we covered on the larger time frame. And then the CPI release occurred and we ran straight into 11,322. The S&P also traded the next 50% long on the hourly time frame, but that's just a different setup for another time. Basically, there is this idea that long could continue because we saw great reactions from them. We saw the CPI release, then it was as expected, which is in general that could help the market. Now, with the S&P holding its next 50% long and moving up and the NASDAQ doing the same, I had confidence in long setups. So what I end up doing, again, we'll drop to the tick chart, is basically noticing that we trade a 50% long here of 11,403. That target completes of 11,569 half. So just like we did on Wednesday, the day prior, we are gonna take our swing low of this current setup to the new high since we completed the target. And we're gonna limit long. I did 11,495. I did a uh, 25 point stop on this trade. My stop was 470. I had a 25 point stop on this trade. That ended up being a stop out. I lost money on that particular trade. But again, just like we did on Wednesday, we're going to take the same setup to the new high and we're going to get long that setup as well. So I had limit orders at 11,438 half. I know that these levels are 435 and 493, but I always round up when I enter. So 495 was the first one, stopped out for 25 points. And then 435 half is the second setup, but I enter a 438 half. I have a 40 point stop on this trade here, 40 point stop. So a 40 point first target. We end up getting that 40 point first target. That's the first third of the trade off for our first target. And then the second target was 80 points. However, we ended up trading this opposing 50% short of 11,505. So I exited 503 half. I exited just before that 505 at 503 half because we have to respect these levels. We're coming down from this larger short setup, 545. Shorts can enter 505, so we have to respect that in some capacity. It's always great to go for a second target of two times your risk, but in this case, I did it a little bit early. So I went for, this ended up being like 1.6 times the risk. It was, uh, it was 65 points from my entry, again, risking 40. So it was like 1.6 times my risk, not two times, so it isn't, you know, what you always want to see. But in this case, it was good management because we are coming into resistance that we have to respect. And we still have that last set. If we do end up running higher, um, that would allow us to make up for the, you know, that earlier exit. What I end up doing on that last set, because we're coming into the bell of 930, is I'm trailing with these prior higher lows in the tick chart. I end up moving my stop. There was a 467 
what I ended up doing was tracking this micro 50% long. And I put my stop around 464, 463, ended up being a 25 point trailing stop. So we got 40, 65, and then uh, 25. So again, that first trade that we took was a 25 point stop. We lost that trade. The second trade is a 40 point stop. We get our first target of 40. The second set is taken off at 65. And the last set was trailed out for 25. So it wasn't risking one to make two, but we covered our initial loss and more with that particular trade in the NASDAQ. And then just another lesson real quick, since we're here, this is a great example of a range day. And when I first started trading, the range was the worst thing that could happen to me. I could never identify it. I would always lose a ton of money, more than I should have when I first started trading futures. I remember trading the S&P mostly when I started and I would, you know, weeks or months profit could be taken out on a range day because I just couldn't identify or know what to do. And what's helped me a lot over the years is realize that if you're breaking your longs and your shorts, you're inside of a range most likely, or at least you're trading choppy and it's not worth trading. What I want to talk about here is notice how we have larger resistance, 11,545. We have larger support, 11,322. We're now inside of this. Both are valid. None have broken. To, to break a Fibonacci setup, you want to break the 61.8. Both of these are still holding in that, in that case. The 61.8 is that red level that is you know, up here at 732 for the short and down here at 268 for the long. So for example, to break your long setup, you wanna see a break below 268. And we talk about that more in the trade room. Again, there's a lot of content covering these strategies. But anyways, we're inside of the 50% short and the 50% long. And we end up having this 50% short on the inside trade. What ends up happening? We fail, we break the 61.8. Remember I had longs that took us higher. so. You know, that's basically what happened there. Um, this short fails. What do we do? We retest the highs of that range, 11,545. Now we draw the long setup. This is one that we took and we're able to get some money off of, but it does end up failing. And then we break below the 68 of 11,400. And now we can head lower and retest 11,322. So we saw the short fail and then we saw the long fail. When I see that, that to me is a, immediately a sign that we are inside of a range and it's there's basically two options. Sit on your hands and wait for the breakout and then go from there. Or if you really want to take a trade, you get long at the lows off the larger support or you get short at the highs off the larger resistance. So basically the only plays are going to be longs at 11,320, shorts at 11,540, and that's what we saw the rest of the day. We traded the long again, we run up to the short. From the short, we head lower. And um, today I didn't have any trades for Friday. I was looking to get long 322 if we got down there, but we never really, we, we never got down there. We basically reversed and then ended up having a decent move higher um, the rest of the day. But that's just another quick lesson where, you know, sometimes traders are like, how can we identify a range? What can we do? The fibs can be very, very useful, especially if you're doing them objectively and just drawing them and seeing what's holding, what's failing. But, you know, that's basically that. So a couple of good examples here in the NASDAQ this week. Again, great examples of losers and winners. We're not just showing winners here. This is realistic trading. You're going to have losers, but you want to make sure that you're taking valid setups. We're being patient. We're not having FOMO. We're going to be disciplined and we're going to trade our system. We have an edge that we've identified. We're going to follow the rules and trade that system. And that's all we can do. And we let the edge play out over time. Um, but the moment you start getting impatient, forcing trades, that's when your edge is gone and you're just not gonna have good results in the long run. All right, but that's all I got for tonight. So I hope that's helpful in some way. If you like the video, please give a like, share. If you got questions or comments, obviously you can just go ahead and comment. Um, and again, the trade room is a great resource if you wanna learn more about this strategy and you know everything there. But um, that's it. So take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.